There's so many paddles on the market, pickleball lovers, but which one should you choose for your game? And what's an objective opinion from a paddle expert like Keith Valentine, the pirate himself? Pickleball lovers, we give to you a comprehensive guide to the best pickleball paddles on the market today. Don't forget to have a good day. Look, I do this full time, so if you buy a paddle, please save 10% and keep me in business. I hold in my hands the carbon fiber faced double black diamond 14 millimeters. Can a good paddle get better? Well, let's find out. Okay, let me address the elephant in the room. Let's talk about the delamination problem. Now, a lot of these thermoform paddles are having this problem and what delamination is, is when the face actually comes unadhered to the polypropylene core. And what this causes is a springboard effect, a trampoline effect. So the paddle is actually hitting the ball faster and harder than it is supposed to. So this is what people got upset with. And then there were even pros that were actually hitting with lacrosse balls, trying to delaminate their paddle so they could get an extra advantage. This is not a problem with the manufacturers. This is a problem with players trying to take advantage and get an edge on the competition. Now, what I can say with these paddles and the new ones coming from 6.0, they also had, they had less than a 5% uh, defect rate and now that's down to nothing because what they've done is they've double bonded the face to the polypropylene core and they've done extra reinforcements on the handle, on the paddle itself. Not gonna tell us exactly how they did it because they don't wanna give away their secrets. I don't blame them. But what I can tell you is I'm about 24 hours in with this paddle and I am not having any problems with it. I think they've actually fixed their problem. One thing to note with any kind of polypropylene paddle is to not leave them in your car, especially if you're in sub uh, zero temperatures, any kind of freezing temperatures, you do not wanna leave this paddle in freezing cold temperatures or any pickleball paddle for that matter because polypropylene becomes very brittle. Even playing in snow, you could ruin your paddle if you play in those cold temperatures, especially playing with a rock hard Dura that's gonna crack on you anyway. You might as well just go hit rocks in your backyard. One other thing to note about these thermoform paddles is because of their construction and because of the way that they're reinforced around the edges with the foam, making the sweet spot bigger, a lot of these do not need lead tape. Just a note on any pickleball paddle, when you add tape to it, that is going to add more force, more plow through, and that's going to shorten the lifespan of your paddle. So not only the thermoformed ones, so I would always recommend playing a paddle stock before you want to add any weight to it. I know that a lot of times we want to have our paddle at a certain weight. What I would recommend is that you look at the way that you play and look at where you're going to weight the paddle. But you know what, if you got to play an 8.5 paddle and the paddle is 7.7, 7, you know, put the weight the way you like to play it, but just be warned that this is going to shorten the lifespan of your paddle. But overall, I love the what they've done with this paddle. This 14 millimeter is hot. It's got great touch, great feel. Let's get into the specs, shall we? It has the 5.3 inch handle, so very comfortable for two-handed backhands. It's 16.3 inches long, has the aerodynamic shape where the head is a little bit bigger than the bottom part of this paddle. Definitely you can feel this when rolling the balls. I love hitting roll shots with this, this paddle. Also, this paddle is a little bit different than this other competition. This paddle has a carbon fiber face that goes all the way down to the bottom of the handle. This, what this does is overlap. It has a co carbon overlay down here and a carbon overlay up here, which overlaps the handle, which keeps from breakage. Also, it still has the thermoformed edge. So far as I'm concerned, this is a solid paddle. Now it comes in a little bit lighter at 7.7 .7 to 7.8 ounces. So it's a little bit lighter paddle. So you might want to add some lead weight to it, but I played this stock just so I could get familiar with it and see what its characteristics were. So. Compared to the 16 millimeter, I gotta say, my hands are faster with this paddle. I love hands battles at the net with this. My hands are definitely faster. I could notice a difference. And usually when you go to a 14 millimeter paddle, you lose a little bit of control. But because of the thermoformed edge and the way that they do the carbon fiber face, I did not feel like I lost any control with this paddle. In fact, I gained a little bit of pop. So. For those that like control paddles, the 16 millimeter is one of the best control paddles. I have nine different paddles that I play in my bag. I keep reaching and grabbing these paddles. 
I absolutely love the design of this. I absolutely love the way this paddle performs. What I found is even with the lighter paddle, the resets and the third shot drops, any of the touch shots, this paddle still performs very well. But what you gain here with a 14 millimeter is a little bit more plow through, a little bit more pop off the paddle face, so you can then put the ball away. I found that my drives were super fast, super powerful, and that I could really put the ball away when the ball got lifted, anything above my shoulders, it was going bye bye, nobody was getting that ball back. This paddle has one of the larger sweet spots. I found that even in the dink battles and dinking, I felt like I could put roll shots on just about everything and I was never a traditional roll shot dinker, but now with this paddle, I love trying to do movement with the ball. I really am trying, especially since I switched to the Eastern forehand grip, I find that this paddle here is phenomenal with the roll shots. I love the way that the Torway carbon fiber grabs the ball. And you know what the cool thing about these paddles are? It takes a couple weeks to break these in. As they break in and the carbon fiber settles, they actually start grabbing better and you can actually maneuver the ball better. You can see the ball bend in the air on the different shots that you hit. As far as the handle, I love the handle shape. I love the way the feeling of this. It's really easy to do an eastern grip, a continental grip. You can really feel the bevels on it. The only negative thing I would say about this paddle is I don't like the leather grip. I personally like the Wilson over grip, so I always take off the leather grips because I got very sweaty hands. I know you didn't want to know that. I got very sweaty hands and the leather grips for me don't do a good job for me to keep the handles from getting damp. So I always put the Wilson overgrip on these guys. But other than that, I can't find anything negative to say about this paddle. This is one of my favorite paddles to play now. I keep reaching for it in my bag. Let's keep the reviews running and save 10% on any pickle or paddle. Which one do you like better? Um, definitely, uh, I like better uh, Grooven Aero Fixing RX. Hi, my name is Mark. I'm a big fan of Grooven paddles. About a year ago, I found this paddle and really liked it. That's Grooven Aero 16H. Why I really liked it because it's elongated paddle and that's the only elongated paddle for me that I can play. Because regular elongated paddles, they are hot heavy and that completely kills it for me. I have a lot of uh, wristy shots as I came from uh, badminton and table tennis. And if uh, you, you do a wristy shots with hot heavy paddle, you injure your wrist, you injure your elbow. Uh, that's not a good idea. The only problem with this paddle, it uh, has a pretty small sweet spot. Hard to do resets and at the net sometimes uh, you, you miss shots because uh, the sweet spot is really small. It definitely does, doesn't bounce here and uh, it doesn't bounce that well here either, which is pretty normal for regular elongated paddle, but you always wish for better. Then I found this one. This is Grooven Row 16 RX. And I absolutely love this paddle because it gives me about the same length as Row 16H, which also elongated paddle, gives me a good reach. Sometimes it's even better reach because this one has a huge sweet spot and everything you hit even here still bounces pretty decently. But the most important thing it is this area. This area, unlike many, many, many paddles, this paddle still allow you to keep the ball in play. When it hits here, it still bounces. Maybe it bounces not as good as here, definitely but still it bounces decently, so you can put, put the ball over the net. You don't miss it. That, that gives you a lot more freedom with reset shots and five eyes at the net. And this paddle feels about the same as that one. The only difference sweet spot on this one is absolutely massive. It's just huge. Apparently, uh, that completely changes your game. It, it makes it way more reliable. Percentage-wise, uh, you hit way more uh, good shots, like resets, uh, blocks, even drops. It feels like it has way more control, about the same power still, and the same softness. And people commenting that I spin better with this paddle. Maybe that's because of larger sweet spot. I cannot uh, like comment on the spin because I don't understand why that would be, but people saying that uh, this spin better. I absolutely love this paddle. Usually, uh, whatever paddle you give me, I will come with some suggestions how to improve it. And this paddle, I don't even know what to do better. Because, because it has everything uh, I want. It has very quick hands. It weighs about uh, 7.9 ounces, pretty light. So very quick at the net, headlight, huge sweet spot, literally. And even when it hits here, which is that spot for the most paddle, this one gives you still decent bounce. You can keep the ball in play. It looks like I found my ideal paddle 
which I thought wasn't possible before. You can look in the description to save 10% on this paddle and other grooving paddles. Would you switch paddles? Yeah, I already sw switched completely to, to this one from this one. Don't, don't want to go back for sure. So that was a decent review. I think this one's better. I finally got a chance to play the Icon version 2 from Diadem. And if you want to hear about it, stay tuned. This is Keith Valentine, the Pickleball Pirate. Let me just say that I am a fan of Diadem as a company. They do not do the same thing twice. So all of their paddles are different in some way, shape, or form from their Diadem Warrior to their Warrior Edge to the Icon and now the Icon V2, even within these models, they're different. Let's talk about the upgrades to this that were from the previous version. So the previous version had this RP uh, spin face material. It did not spin very much. It got about 1450 on the spin test through Chris Olson and other independent testers. That's a little bit just average, right? So when you swiped with the old version, it wouldn't really grab the ball. First thing they've done is they've got a polyurethane coating with grit paint in it that was kind of like the vice paddle that they came out. It's not a legal paddle, but it's a, it's a recreational paddle, has holes in it. Um, with that paint, they put that on here and it is noticeably different. So these paddles get about 1850 on the spin test. So that is about top 20 of spin of all the paddles measured so far by Chris Olson. So 1851, exactly the same as the Selkirk Power Air. All right, let me give you a little bit more specs on these before I go further. Uh, this is 8.0 ounces. It's 16 inches long, 7.6 inches wide. It's got a 13.7 millimeter thickness and the balance on this is 235 which means it's a head neutral or maybe a little bit leaning towards head light. You might want to add some lead tape over here at the end if you want to add more any swing weight to it. The longer version which is my favorite version right now and I did not have to add any weight to this is 8.25 ounces. It is 16.5 inches long, 7.2 inches wide and uh, same thickness, but 242. So it's a little bit more head heavy because it's extended. It's got a five and a half inch handle. And this is a 5.25 inch handle. But so five and a half inch handle, very comfortable with a two handed backhand, very comfortable for that shot. What I'll say about these things right off the bat is they do not feel like a 13 millimeter paddle. So you see how thin these are. Mostly, most of the time when you're playing a thin paddle, you want to stay away from them because they're a little bit harder on the elbow. So there's only one paddle that's thin that is made for tennis elbow and that's the Pro Kinex. But these guys here play more like a polypropylene paddle. That's because they are with full of polypropylene. So what they've done with these things, very much like the Warrior that they have, they've got a couple of sandwiched small pocket polypropylene layers with a layer in the middle here that absorbs the shock. And so it's like a very, very thin layer in the middle. You've got these two guys sandwiched around it. So when you hit these paddles, they truly feel like a control paddle, but they're not they have a lot of pop. So on the swing weight chart, this is 122. I believe this one, 121. This one is, I think, around 114 on the swing weight. This has more swing weight than the Power Air with the same amount of spin. When you start combining these things, you have a thin paddle that has more power and can produce spin you have a dangerous weapon. Traditionally, I was a blocking player. So until recently, I was always a blocking player. So I like the Selkirk Vanguards, the, the really good touch control paddles. That was my thing. I didn't hit with spin. Now that I'm starting to learn how to hit with spin, I'm finding that I really, really enjoy hitting shots that involve spin and being able to shape my shots. These paddles, I keep reaching for in my bag. The spin that I can generate with these on third shot drops, third shot drives, shot, even just dinking in the kitchen, you can brush the ball and it just grabs hold of it. With 1,851 on the spin meter from Chris Olson and the other guys, like it is top 20 in spin and it can be felt when you play with this paddle. The other thing that I'll tell you is that for a power paddle, I've never felt this much control. I can take the ball and pretty much put it anywhere in the court and just feel like it, it's a dart thrower to me. This paddle has so much control. I can be very precise with my shots. Instead of trying to hit at somebody's foot, I'm trying to clip his toenail. That's the kind of control I'm talking about here. So one of the reasons why they have so much control, Diadem was a tennis company. They had a, a foam injection system called the Flex Stabilization System they used on their tennis rackets. 
they did it on this paddle as well. So just like the thermoformed paddles, this is not thermoformed, it has a layer of high density foam. So with this flex stabilization, high density foam, they inject that around the edge of this paddle, making the sweet spot on this so large for a thin paddle. I was very amazed at this. And holding both of these, right, this one has a little bit less pop than, than this guy, a little bit less reach, but the control on this is a little bit higher than this guy. So this one's a little bit harder to control because it's a longer paddle. You got to have your timing right. I, I found myself um, getting lazier with this paddle because I didn't have to bend my knees as far because I could use the end of the paddle. Uh, but I also get a little bit reachy at the net when I play with a longer paddle. So just be aware that this thing feels like you're going to get to more balls with a longer paddle but they're gonna be some trade-offs in control and trade-offs in you know maybe being a little bit more aggressive out of the air or getting lazy with not bending your knees and catching the end of the paddle. The awesome benefit I think for these paddles to me is the more offense. Now, my game is offensive sometimes, but not offensive sometimes. I am not an aggressive pickleball player. I typically am a control player. I'm a resetter. I'm gonna block you back into the kitchen in, in no man's land. I'm just gonna try and block it back. What I found with these paddles is I had way more offense. I was able to be aggressive at the kitchen. My counter punches when I got out in front of the balls was hard for them to get their hands back on. So the offensive increase on this without the loss of control, I keep reaching for these paddles in my bag. I love the way they play and I love the way that the ball responds to them. One last thing to note that I think is just another unique identifier of this company is the edge guard. It is an edgeless paddle, but it does have an edge guard here. This edge guard is removable and they got like nine different colors. So now you got customization on top of it. I know that sounds silly, but a lot of people like to do some cosmetic stuff. So you could get different color edge guards and have a black paddle with a red edge guard or green or pink, whatever color you want. This white one here, you could put different colors on it to make it look more snazzy. Uh, I love the, what they've done with these paddles. This is a great company. And with our discounts below, you get a great 10% discount. Take that on us. And I tell you what, you got to give these paddles a try. Keith, that was so beautiful. Let's keep the reviews going. I hold in my hands a new player in the game, Holbrook Pickleball Paddles. I think these paddles are great. Stay tuned if you want to find out why. So let's talk about the Mav Pro and the Mav Pro E paddles from Holbrook. I'm going to start with the Mav Pro. This paddle here, I was actually very impressed with this paddle. Let's get into the specs. The core on this is a dual reactive polypropylene honeycomb core. It's got a force field T700 woven 3K carbon fiber face. It's got white stitched ridged performance grip. It's 16.5 inches by 7.5 inches wide. It comes in a weight about 7.8 to 8 ounces. And the grip length is 5.5 inches, so it's good for the two-handed backhand. And 4.25 inch grip circumference. They come in a 13 millimeter and a 16 millimeter. This I have here is the 16 millimeter. So let's talk about the specifics of this paddle. I really like the way this paddle plays. It's got a woven carbon fiber face. So I'll show you a picture of this here. So just like most of the others, but this one has a little bit bigger carbon fiber weave. Some of the other ones the, uh, of its competitors do a tighter weave. This one actually has a little bit bigger weave pattern. And so I was a little skeptical at first to see how it would respond, but I gotta tell you, I think that this paddle performs just as good or better than some of its competitors. I love the way this paddle grabs the ball. I'm able to shape the shots a lot better than I thought I would picking up this paddle for the first time. Because it's a 16 millimeter grip, it is 4.25 inch, but it is a little bit blocky. So for those that have smaller hands, you might want to go with a 13 millimeter paddle. And the 13 millimeter paddle, I've hit that as well. I don't have it with me, but it also still performs very well because what I think they've done really well with this paddle is they have a very solid core. So when you're hitting with this paddle, anywhere you hit it on the face, it doesn't feel like 
like there's a dead spot. It doesn't feel like you're losing anything. It really feels like it's got a very large sweet spot. I found myself being able to block from anywhere, being able to reset from anywhere. And even if I wasn't hitting in the flush part of the paddle, I felt like I wasn't losing performance on this paddle. I really like the defense in the kitchen line. I like my attacks from the kitchen line because I could hit it anywhere on this face and the ball would still go where I was intending it to. So I really felt like when I played with this paddle, I started getting confidence really quickly. So a lot of times when I pick up a paddle, it, it might take a little bit to get used to. I found that I could immediately be able to hit this paddle and be able to do what I wanted with it without much learning curve. Now I play a lot of control paddles, so this is still a control paddle, but what I liked about it is this still had a lot of pop. I felt that my drives, I felt like I could get something on my drives. I felt like my attacks from the kitchen line or my, uh, my counter punches from the kitchen line had a little bit more pep on it than I'm used to. So it took a little bit of getting used to for me, but I found that as a, for a control paddle, this paddle here had a lot of pop to it that I found that I enjoyed. And those for the two-handed backhand, because it's a 5.5 inch handle, you can get a comfortable two-handed backhand with this. I really felt like I was very comfortable with my third shot drops my third shot resets even. When, when I was getting attacked in no man's land, my resets were good. In the kitchen, I, I really felt the control of this paddle. I felt like I could put the ball anywhere I wanted when I was dinking with it and, and doing anything in the kitchen that I wanted. And because of the head shape on this one, I felt like I was able to get over the ball and able to get some topspin on it and attack the way I wanted to get some topspin on the ball. I used to not play with topspin, but I am really spoiled with all these carbon fiber paddles. I really enjoy it. It is going to be in my regular rotation in my bag with my eight other paddles that I like playing. This one's going to make the rotation. Okay, so let's talk about the Mav Pro E series. Now this is more traditionally shaped like the Invictus of the world, the Electrum E's of the world. So it has a longer face and it has a shorter handle. So let's get into the specs. Let me read this for you. It's also got the T700 woven 3K carbon face, but you can tell that this has a much tighter pattern as you can look here in the microscopic view. Much, much tighter pattern of the carbon here. It is still 16.5 inches high, 7.5 inches wide, comes in a weight from 7.8 to 8 ounces. It only has a 4.75 inch grip and still has the 4.25 inch grip circumference. Now, this one has a little bit more beveled pronouncement. So it's, they call it a specialized comfort grip, but you can tell by playing this, it has a little bit more pronounced bevels. So if you really like to feel the bevels, this one has a little bit more bevel shape. Because the grip is a little bit shorter, two-handed backhands are less comfortable with this, but you can still do a two-handed backhand with it. It is still very doable with this. Let me just show you the difference of these together so you can see that the handle length is a little bit you know shorter and then you can see the face how the face extends so the same size paddle same length paddle but you can see how the it gives you a little bit more defensive face to hit with if you're hitting it down here you're in trouble already but this gives you a little bit more to work with um, this this grip feels a little bit more blocky to me but that's I think because of the bevels but I like the way that these grips feel. I felt like you could change grips with it. You can go from Eastern to Continental to Western real easily with this. You can feel it. I really like the core of these paddles. I found that they were not, they were reactive, but I felt like I didn't have a lot of dead spots on it. So once again, hitting out here on the end on these paddles, they're a little bit less powerful out here when you're hitting outside of the sweet spot. And obviously down here by the handle, you're not gonna get as good a reaction out of these, these paddles when you're hitting outside of the sweet spot. But I found that I could do anything I wanted with these paddles. I felt like my control shots were there. These are definitely control-based paddles. So this has less pop than the, the Mav Pro series, and it is a little bit less control on any of these longer paddles. You're gonna have a little bit less control but better defense with it. So you got a little bit more surface space to work with, so you're gonna find that your resets, your third shot drops, all of these shots are great with these paddles. I also felt like I could still get spin with this. A little bit less spin, it felt to me, than the Holbrook Mav Pro. I felt like I could get a little bit less spin and that's probably because of the tighter weave. You, It doesn't feel as gritty as the carbon weave on the Mav Pro, but I still felt like I could shape the ball really well. Third shot drops, third shot drives, 
still phenomenal with this paddle. So I think that this paddle is a really good control model. This is another one that I'm going to start playing regularly. I really find that I could just pick this paddle up and start playing with it and I didn't have any kind of learning curve. So that's all I got for these Mav Pro. Look, if you look in the description below, you can get our discount code. That'll give you 10% off of these paddles. These paddles retail for 180 with our discount. You get the 10% off. You can get the good discount there. But I think these paddles are right on line with all the other ones in the market. I think they have a great warranty on it. They have a 30 day return policy, so I feel like they back their products and I believe they have a six month warranty. Keith, that was so beautiful. Let's keep the reviews going. Code in description for discounts. You wanna hear about the new Diadem Warrior V2? Stay tuned. Let's talk a little bit about the Warrior line. Have you here? You know, one of the things I like about Diadem is that they don't do the same thing twice, okay? they take technology and they, they innovate off of that and they take what they've learned and then they apply it to the next model. One of the things I truly appreciate about companies like this is that they're innovative. Not two of their paddles are alike. Uh, what I love about this is that, so the first one that came out was the Warrior. Now the Warrior had a waffle setting, you know, so it had waffles for the first time. It was like layers of polypropylene and then it had this a little bit harder uh, acrylic type core in the middle. And so what would happen is, is they're very much a control paddle, but when you would compress the ball, when you would put power into it, it would hit that center core and it would gain speed. The one drawback about this is about eight, five ounces. So it was a little bit heavier. People couldn't, um, couldn't use it. And then it had the molded handles. It was a 19 millimeter paddle, biggest paddle, thickest paddle on the market at the time. And then it had a tapered handle that, that tapered down to a normal feel. So you could not have to have huge hands to hold this big thick paddle. The next evolution of that was the Warrior Edge. Now the Warrior Edge was the first carbon line where it had an etched carbon face and it was a, a 16 millimeter paddle instead of a 19 millimeter paddle. It still had the smaller handle, really good bevels. It was the first um, crack at the carbon etching and it was a very solid paddle. It's the one that Christian Alshon plays. Really good paddle. Uh, about about 1450 on Chris Olson's spin chart. So not a high spinning paddle, but I would say a great all around blocking paddle, great playing paddle. And uh, if you watch Christian Alshon with it, like he makes some amazing shots with this paddle. So then let's get to the Warrior V2. So the Warrior V2 is an edgeless design. So a couple different things. Let's talk about the innovation that they've put into this pedal. So first it's edgeless. And then they give you this armor tape that you put around it to protect the edge. And the edge is done with this liquid carbon fiber. So first thing new to this is a liquid carbon fiber edge that gives it a little, a, a lot more support. And this thing is a molded frame. So this is a molded frame in here with the same waffle method that they used on all of the Warrior lines here. This has the three layers of the XL core with a, with a middle core that is a little bit stiffer. Same molded handle, same bevels, same everything here. They took the weight off of it. So instead of being 8.5, it's 8.25. So it's lighter. Still a little bit head heavy, not as head heavy as the original Warrior. And so the 8.25 ounces leans a little bit more forward. So then the next thing they did with this is they did the same carbon fiber etched face, same as the Warrior Edge. So this would get the round the whole 1450 RPMs by Chris Olson's chart, and the swing weight would probably be around the same 120. So we talked about the face, we talked about the edge, and we talked about the edgeless design. Let's talk about performance. I love this paddle. I love playing with it. Uh, what I found with playing with this paddle that the whole face becomes a sweet spot. It is a very large sweet spot. You get a lot more feedback from the edge. So if you're hitting off on the edge, you know it. You feel a little bit more uh, resistance in your hand. You feel a little bit more shock up your hand, but it's not unpleasant. It's very, it's very telling of where you're hitting the ball on the face and it helps you make an adjustment really quickly. This is still a control paddle. I, I would not say that this is a spinny paddle that you're like, hey, I'm going to just carve the ball all over the place but it is very comparable spin in certain shots. It performs really well. I love my blocks with it. I love my resets with it. I like my drives with it because when I relaxed and just let the paddle do the work, this had plenty of spin, as you can see from my drives and my drops. And a lot of times my dinks, I'm able to get enough spin with this paddle to do whatever I want with it. I found it exceptional with counter punching at the kitchen line. 
when I was up and ready to block, because it's at 8.25 ounces, it is still a very solid paddle. So when it hits anywhere on this face, I'm getting resistance. I'm getting ability to get a hand on a ball. In my hands, I felt because of the 8.25 ounces, it's not so head heavy. So you're not like drooping. I found I was able to hold my position up better. I wasn't letting the paddle droop as much as the heavier paddles. So that's one of the, the drawbacks of heavier paddles is that you, you, they're so heavy that you let them droop and you, you let your paddle get down. And so I was able to keep this up better. And I love the handle shape. I've always liked this tapered handle. I thought that Diadem did a phenomenal job with this handle because you can feel the bevels. And so for those that are changing grip, like I'm really working on changing from an Eastern grip where my knuckles on this bevel here, the top bevel on bevel three, and then I'm switching to continental when I'm at the kitchen. I even beat Dave Nell in skinny singles for the first time in my life with this paddle. So this paddle is amazing just because of that. <laughs> Just kidding. It is a good performing pedal. I found that I really like it. I really like it. It is going to be in the regular rotation in my bag. So that was a decent review. I think this one's better. In today's paddle market, which is super saturated with over 1700 paddles on the approved list, is it possible to do something different and innovative? Well, there is a company that is. Stay tuned. I'm talking about Pro XR Pickleball. This is the only company that I know of that is actually doing something different with the handles. And when I say different, it is something different. Let's talk about each of the models and why I like them and what they have going for them and what they have going against them to help you make an informed decision on if this is a paddle you want to try. So first one I'm going to talk about is the Pro XR Carbon 14. This one here is their base model and this is made for a continental grip. And when I say it's made for a continental grip, if you look at this handle, it has a different shape to it. Now let's just talk about some of the specs so you guys know how big this paddle is. It is 16 and a half inches long. It's got a five and a half inch handle with a four inch circumference. So smaller handle with a little bit length, more length. And the paddle is only 7.5 inches wide. So it has a little bit smaller head. It has a T700 carbon face, which generates all the spin of all the T700 carbon faces. You can look here at the microscopic picture of it. Great pattern on this. Let's talk about this paddle and what I like about it. What I do like about this paddle is it forces you to have tip down. So if you like to play with topspin, it almost makes you want to hit topspin on every shot. So for me, it took a little bit of getting used to. I'm not used to hitting topspin on every shot, but this paddle here puts your tip down so you can get good roll shots with it. And what I find is even on the backhand, you can switch to a little bit more Western grip. Eastern grip feels a little bit different here, but it is made for a continental. This handle puts you in a continental. It feels very comfortable, gives you really good feedback on where your hand is at. For me, this paddle needs a little bit more weight. It comes in at 8.2 ounces, but I would add a little bit of lead tape to all four corners just to widen the sweet spot a little because the head is a little bit smaller on these paddles. What I like about that is though, when you go over the ball, it really feels like you can get over the ball and move really good and get good swiping on there. So really, really good for topspin with this size head. Because these paddles have a little bit longer handles, they come in head light. So that's why a little bit of lead tape will help this for your blocks and your resets because it is a little bit light on the head. When you hit on the off center a little bit, the, the paddle will move in your hands. And so just adding a touch of weight at the top and in the sides here will help tremendously on this paddle for stability. But I found that my resets were great with this ball. With my third shots were great with this. The drives, I thought the drives were phenomenal because it actually helped me get the tip down so I can roll over the ball and get some good topspin to it. So I found that this paddle really, really helped me on those shots. But overall, if you are a tennis person, this may not be the paddle for you because you don't like the feedback here. What I like is that it also makes it very easy to put the tip up at the net. Because of the way this paddle sits, if you just put your hand straight, look at what it does for the handle. You don't have to do anything with your wrist. It puts you in a good position. So when you're here, you are in a good position at the net with the tip up. And then when you go to drop your hand down, I, like I said, it really forces you to put the tip down. So really, really helps with the topspin shot. So overall, I like this base model. I found that I could play with it. 
Took a little bit of getting used to. I missed some shots into the net, getting used to the topspin and even getting topspin on my dink shots. This really, really helped with that. This paddle comes in a 14 millimeter model and a 16 millimeter model. So got some options. It is definitely worth a try. It feels different than any other paddle out there. I think you should check it out. Okay, the second model in this lineup is the Johnson Cola. Now, the difference on this one from the Pro XR regular carbon is this one comes in only 10.5 millimeters, so 10.5 millimeter paddle. It is still 16 and a half inches long. It has a 7.5 inch width, and it is only a 10.5 millimeter paddle. So one of the thinnest paddles on the market other than the Pro Kenex and uh, and the Diadem Icon. This paddle is just a little bit bigger than those paddles. The difference on this guy is it has a 5.7 inch handle and is still only a four inch circumference. It is set up for an Eastern grip. So you can see here the way it is shaped. It is an Eastern grip. So you can call, put the knuckle on bevel three and this is where it feels most comfortable. When you do it here, it feels most comfortable here in the Eastern grip. And I have recently switched to an Eastern grip. My coach wants me to play with an Eastern grip, so I'm trying this out. And this paddle really actually helps me do that. But I found that all the resets, all of the shots that I like to hit, the top spin third shot drop, top spin dinks, this paddle really helps me with that because once again, with the Eastern grip, you can get your tip down a little bit better. And so you can get your tip down on this and you can really roll over this. With these head shapes, I find that you can really roll over the ball with these head shapes because they're a little bit smaller. Now, because this is a 10.5 paddle, you need to add a little bit of weight potentially to the end of this because it is head light. Because of the extra handle length, there's more weight down here. So the paddle feels very light. It does not feel like an 8.2 ounce paddle. That's because the weight is in the handle. It gets to your big muscles here so you don't feel so heavy. It doesn't put any strain on your elbows. So adding a little bit of lead tape at the four corners of this paddle will really help with the resets. I found that when I hit um, reset shots or when shots were coming a little bit off center, you could really feel it on the paddle. And if you're holding really lightly with this paddle, with a very light grip, it could affect your ball performance. So just a little bit of weight would be very good for stabilizing this paddle. But I found that with the T700 Carbon, just like all of the others, this guy can spin the ball just like all of the others. It's got a good honeycomb core. And I found that the, I liked the handle difference. I'm a handle guy. I, hand, I modify handles myself. Uh, I help people modify their, their paddles to make them play differently. And I do a lot of handle modifications. So this here, is very different, it's very unique, and it forces you into the Eastern grip. It doesn't feel comfortable if you change. It, I mean, you can change to a semi-continental without it feeling too funky, but mostly this is for you to hold it in the Eastern grip, and this handle really gives you great feedback of where your hand is at on the paddle. But overall, I enjoyed this paddle. I will uh, weight it up the way I like. I like to play them stock so I know how they feel coming out of the box but I'm gonna add some weight to these guys and play them a little bit more. Okay, the last paddle in this lineup is the Zane Navratil. He recently signed with these guys. This is a 14 millimeter paddle, same specs as the others. 16 and a half inches long, 7.5 inches wide. The difference on this guy, it has a six inch handle. So two handed backhands are very, very good and easy with this paddle. I found that with this paddle, I felt like I could really change grips. I can move it to any grip I want, feel the bevels really pronounced, really good strong bevels on here so you can feel it. And I found that the extra length of the paddle, when you hold down way here on the end, you get some pretty good length out of this. You could probably get a good 17, 17 and a half inches out of this if you're holding way down here on the handle like a lot of people do. What I found with these paddles in general is that my hands felt faster at the net because they're a little bit headlight. Once again, I would probably add tape to this, lead tape to all four corners up here just a little bit to stabilize the paddle a little bit because what I found is that just resets and when I'm just trying to block, if you're holding really lightly and it hits off center, you'll, you'll lose a lot of power there. So it's good to just put a touch of weight all four corners of this guy. It stabilizes this, makes the sweet spot a lot bigger and this is a very good paddle. I really enjoyed it. I felt like my third shot drops, my drives were phenomenal with it. And it is not a power paddle, so it is still a control paddle. 
but it's a 14 millimeter. So 14 millimeters give you a little bit more power than the 16 millimeters. I like this paddle and I'm gonna play with it more. I'm gonna weight this up to my specs. I usually play at about 8.5. I'm gonna weight this guy up and I'm gonna get some more rounds in it. Well, that's all I have for these Pro XRs. I tell you what, I like innovation. I like a company that is pushing the boundaries and I can't wait to see what they come up with next. Keith, that was so beautiful. Let's keep the reviews going. Okay, we've all heard the hype and we saw this new paddle that came out from Diadem. It's completely illegal to use in tournament play, but does it actually have a place somewhere in pickleball? This is listed as a prototype paddle. So when it's a prototype paddle, obviously it is not meant to be played in tournaments and it has some foam in it. This has the EVA foam, which is illegal to use because it flexes over time and it gives more bounce to the paddle. Also, it has holes in the face. So it's not legal to play in tournaments for those two reasons. But the paddle itself is 16 millimeter, its balance is 235, and it's an eight ounce paddle. It's 16.4 inches long and it's 7.4 inches wide. So it's traditional elongated handle shape and elongated paddle shape. It has a really good shape handle. You can feel the bevels really well. I think the handle is really good. Diadem, I've always loved their handles on the Warrior and the Warrior Edge. Same handle as those guys, really, really good handle. But what's the difference? Why would I want to play this paddle? So there's a couple different areas that I think that this paddle can be used in rec play. First off, the sound. This paddle is one of the quietest paddles I've ever hit. You cannot hear it from 30 feet away as much as the other paddles that you can hear from 120 feet away. So it sounds very quiet. So if you're in a place or a community that has noise ordinances, this might be a paddle that you could pick up because then you're not going to get complained at. You use this with an Onyx indoor ball, you would not even hear. It'd be like you're playing with a foam ball. That's how quiet this would be. The second thing I think that this paddle is worthwhile to think about is the speed. So if you're a little bit older and you need a little bit of help from the paddle to give you speed, this is unparalleled in speed. There's been multiple speed tests done by multiple channels where this paddle is five to six miles per hour faster than any other paddle. So at the net with a little bitty flick of the wrist, you can have some contact points and put it back. So one of these days I'm gonna get four of these paddles and we're gonna have a little bit of game called speedball because I'd like to see how fast this ball gets. When you're playing with four 4.5 plus players, I bet this paddle's gonna hurt somebody. I think we'll call it the, the body shot contest or you know speedball, whatever we wanna call it. But I'll say that this, mat, this paddle is very innovative, it's different, and I think it's gonna start pushing the envelope on where paddles could go in the future when they figure out how to use this foam that's on the inside legally and to make this paddle where it is legal to play. So that was a decent review. I think this one's better. Andiamo! Yep, this is the new paddle called the Volaire Mach 1, and it is the Julian Arnold signature paddle. You want to hear about it? Stay tuned. So first off with grabbing this paddle, you know, it does look a lot similar shape to the Yola. That was the paddle he was playing before this. And he's gone through several different models of the Yola. It comes in a 14 millimeter and a 16 millimeter paddle version. The grip size is 4.3 inches. The grip length is five and a half inches. The paddle length is 16 and a half inches. The paddle width is 7.5. What I'll say about this paddle is it's definitely long enough for a two-handed backhand. And I'll say this, uh, after hitting this paddle, I'm very impressed by it. It is a stiffer paddle. What I'll say the difference is between this and like the Yola, this handle is a little bit wider down here. So with a little bit wider handle, the swing weight's gonna go down. It's gonna go a little bit more down to the middle. It's gonna make the sweet spot a little bit smaller, but this has a very large sweet spot still. It is very comfortable paddle to play with. I found that my spin shots, my power shots, it's lacking a little bit of power because it has a little bit more heavy handle. But I love the even balance of this. With the even balance like this, your hands are faster at the net. So when you have a paddle like this and you can move your hands faster at the net, your defense goes up. You can always add lead tape to these paddles. So it'll help you get a little bit more pop out of them. It has the T700 carbon fiber face and it is mostly like 
the others in, in its weight class. You can look at the pattern right here under the microscope and you can see the carbon fiber weave. It's a pretty tight weave and we, we all know that this material lasts pretty long. I'll say this with any other carbon paddles that you play, usually takes a week to two weeks for these paddles to break in. That's so the carbon fiber actually relaxes and starts to flex the way it's supposed to. So always give yourself a little bit of break in time for these paddles. One of the other things I like about this, I typically don't like the grips that come on these paddles. Uh, I typically take them off and I put my Wilson over grips on, but I gotta say that this full layer grip is very tacky and as your hands sweat, it actually absorbs it pretty well. So stock coming off the gate, this is a really good solid handle with a really good solid handle cover on it. And I can say that the, the bevels are very pronounced. So you can feel the bevels. You can feel bevel one, bevel two. And so you can put your knuckles in the right place by feel. Keith, sorry to interrupt your review. Let me say I played with both the 16 millimeter and the 14 millimeter. I do agree with you in the sense they are harder, right? I usually play with the temper, right? This is a soft, soft paddle. If I really want to go to rec play and bang, Volair, baby. Volair all day. If you know Julian Arnold's game, see this wing, right? This wing, boom, 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 boom. But let me say, this paddle's weighted for this movement, right? However, this temper is set up for this movement, right? So it depends. If you're coming from tennis, this Volair is so amazingly cool. And I love Julian Arnold. Look at this buddy he said, baby. Come on. Come on. Now or never. Now or never. Bye. Bye. I don't even know what that means. Uh, Adiamo. <laughs> and I say it better than Julian Arnold, but Full Air is cool. It's innovative. I do love Julian Arnold's game. He kind of stole it from me, but I do have a better version. Just so you know, Julian. And don't forget to have a good day. Back to Keith. The best thing about this paddle is the price point. It comes in at $160. And with our discount code, you can get an additional 10% off of that. That makes this one of the best value paddles out there for the price and the bang for your buck. Keith, that was so beautiful. Let's keep the reviews going. Have you ever thought that the variety of pickleball paddle space is completely wild? USA Pickleball presently has 1,683 approved models. All the different shapes, sizes, grips, faces, prices, and colors. Is it possible to find the right paddle for you? Can you stay within one brand? Stay tuned. Let's talk about Groovin, G-R-U-V-N. One of the unique features of Groovin brand is that it has a paddle practically for everyone. It has seven various shapes, models, and each model has two thicknesses two grip variants, and several edge colors. In fact, this is one of the only paddle manufacturers that gives you choice of paddle colors. I think that really differentiates them. All the paddles are not heavy. They're from 7.6 to 8.1 ounces. So they're very easy to adjust with lead tape to your personal weight and balance preferences. Already sound too complicated? No worries, we are here to help. Also, our viewers enjoy a 10% discount on all Groovin paddles with the code PIRATES. So first let's start with the complete beginner. So if you're a complete beginner, you probably really don't want to spend that much for your first or second paddle. It's better for you to learn technique and use a control model. The control model will give you the best experience so you can learn how to play pickleball without having to figure out how to hit a specific paddle. So first off, we would recommend to stay away from the elongated paddles. Why? Well, with any paddle shape, there's a trade-off. You gain something, you lose something. When you get an additional length, you lose the sweet spot and control. That means it's harder to control the ball with your paddle. And you need to control badly when you're learning basics. For the same reason, you probably want thicker, slower paddles. The pop and power control sweet spot usually go in the opposite directions. Learning basics with a control paddle is way, way more efficient. Besides that, you will develop some nice hands power when you started with a slower paddle. So these are the models you wanna look at. You wanna look at the raw R, the raw V, the raw S. We also have the gripper, the launch, and the rounder G. Now these are all in this body shape that we're talking about here. The choice between these paddles could be made based on your budget. The launch and the rounder are $30 to $60 cheaper, and they have some design preference differences. They don't have this carbon face. So while the rounded shape max out the sweet spot, it's not the rectangular traditional shape which many prefer. The main difference between the more expensive black raw models and the colorful launch gripper rounder is the spin abilities. So these models here versus these models here, it's just a little bit more spin with the, the carbon faced ones. Truly speaking, you don't need spin at this stage, even though it provides a bit more control 
which may be not worth the extra $30 to $60. Still, we'd recommend to stay with the graphite thick version of the rounder or the launch to provide better control and less power than the composite versions. So now you're an intermediate and you've learned the basics and you want to improve. We would still recommend to stay with the wide body paddles. At this level, sweet spot is still more important than reach. Unless your budget is limited, we'd recommend the carbon fiber paddles. They provide better control and way more spin. Are we trying to tell you that you need to learn spin already? Probably not. There are still so many things you want to learn before spin in pickleball. But carbon fiber gives you more control and more consistent bounce. Over the time, carbon fiber wears off longer than any other paddle skins. So they'll last a little bit longer. So the main choice you probably want to make is the paddle shape between the raw R, the raw S, and the raw V. The difference in shape is more about personal preferences, while the thickness affects power, sweet spot size, spin, and throw angle. If you feel that you need more power, you need the 13 millimeter versions. If you don't need any help from the paddle, you got enough paddle on your own, the 16 millimeter versions is really just for you. Incredible control, softness, and spin makes these paddle a very solid choice. For the advanced player, you probably have already tried different paddles and know more or less what you want. We recommend you focus on the raw series with the carbon face and that provides more control and unparalleled spin. Many advanced players prefer the elongated paddles for longer reach at the kitchen line. These are the raw H, the raw X, and the raw E. Saying that, we're just going to talk about the differences rather than giving recommendations because we believe that advanced players know better what they want. So the unique feature of Groovin paddles is the more balanced weight distribution. They're not as top heavy as the other long paddles from other brands. So what's the difference between the elongated models? The most top light one is the raw H. This guy here is very, has a very long handle. It's a 5.875 inch handle. It's good for two-handed backhands and feels almost like a badminton racket. Very, very head light compared to other long handled paddles. It is very fast to the net, has decent control and plenty of power, even the 16 millimeter version. The trade off here is the sweet spot size. Because it is not head heavy, the sweet spot size is a little bit smaller, a little bit harder to control. You miss, you'll feel it a little bit more. This paddle is ideal for those with a badminton background. It also has easy wrist manipulation. Gives you some power on ground strokes and very, very quick at the net. The next is the Raw X. It is probably the most popular elongated shape. It's the same as the popular Carbon One, Diadem Warrior, the Franklin Signature, the Engage Pursuit MX, and others. It has a significant sweet spot upgrade compared to the Raw H model, and it still holds neutral with the headlight balance. The handle length is still 5.5, still long enough for a two-handed backhand. It will not be as fast at the net as the Raw H, but it is much better on the control shots, the resets, the dinking. I feel much more comfortable with this one in my hands than the Raw 8. But it still has similar power to the Raw H. It's not much less power, but definitely more control. The last long-handed model one will be the Raw E. Now this one is very much like the popular Electrum E. It is very indeed close to the Electrum E, but I think this one has a little bit better handle in my honest opinion, and overall some more solid construction. So while you can put two hands on the grip, the grip is only 4.75 inches long. It provides you with the most property for hitting the ball. This is the most head-heavy model of Groovin. This has several implications. It has more power on ground strokes. It is very, very good at defense. And it is a bit slow at the net. In case you don't want the long body and you want to just stick with the wide body, we recommend the Raw S, the Raw R, and the Raw V. They're awesome paddle models with the Raw R having the largest sweet spot and the best control. But of course, you minimize the power, right? You minimize the power the shorter paddle you go, but you get more control. Some players that don't need help with power, they have no problems hitting with power with these paddles. But I would still say that the Raw 13S, even when you go to the 13 millimeter models, they still do not feel like a 13 millimeter. In my opinion, these are the best 13 millimeter paddles I've hit without sacrificing control, you still gain the pop of a 13 millimeter paddle. When we look at these models, these are a lot of choices. There's actually eight different versions of Groovin. I don't have enough slots on my rack, otherwise I'd have them here. And I guarantee you guys, you will not go wrong with buying these paddles. And you also get a 10% discount from us. Use the code PIRATES. The link is in the description below. So that was a decent review. I think this one's better. Terra TC16 review right now. Pickable lovers, don't forget to have a good day. Look, I'm making this more of a testimonial. When I got this paddle about a week and a half ago, I was amazed 
by the weighting on this paddle. This is the holy grail, in my opinion, to the shape of a paddle, meaning I can get around so quickly on this paddle because it's oval shape. I don't know why no one's really made a paddle somewhat like this in carbon fiber. So this is from yesterday. I'm in the top right hand corner. I'm playing with the temper and take a look at how I can maneuver the ball, how I can speed it up. The ball stays on the paddle that much longer. And I can do that. That was a pretty good shot by me. Let's look at a couple more points. Quick speed up right. The ball can stay on the paddle a little longer. That's why I really think I can do damage on Saturday in pro. And take a look. I still get power right, but I'm spinning the ball more. With the Terra TC16, and look what I can do from the kitchen line. I'm working on this two-handed backhand. If you have a two-handed backhand, you really like this paddle, because you could do that. The width of the TMP are 16 millimeters. It is textured carbon fiber. If you feel this, it spins like anything else. I don't really understand carbon fiber. I will say I was blown away by the amount of spin I can get with this paddle. When I'm driving with this paddle, it naturally wants to come over in my hand. It really does. This weight's incredible. I will say one thing. When I really try to crush it, to crush it, I don't know. I don't quite kill it. Can I get power from the Terra TC16? Because it's extremely soft. So soft that it is very amazing for resets and I can get power from it. But I don't get crazy pop. What does that mean? You're not going to get that pop like a Groovin E gives you. Why do I like this? I like this because I'm playing pro on Saturday and I'm not beating them with pop. This paddle gives me a chance to win from the kitchen with my speed ups, with my misdirections. It is everything I really ever wanted in a pickleball paddle. I'm blown away by this paddle. I really am. I'm not sponsored by Temper, but I'm playing pro APP on Saturday because I truly think I can do damage from the kitchen line with this paddle with my misdirections it's so soft it stays on the paddle a really long time let's keep the reviews running and save 10 percent on any pickle paddle i finally got a chance to play the black diamond from six zero and i gotta tell you i'm super impressed with this paddle let me tell you about it so first off just like the other double black diamond this has a carbon forged handle so what they do is they make strength right here in the neck so the the paddle doesn't break and you've seen chris olson try to break paddles like this on his knee and the carbon overlay that they do here is an overlapping carbon that makes the handle strength way better. The other thing it did, they did is they sealed the edge with the carbon layer and then they did the foam around the edges to give it more support. Now, this composite material, this is not raw carbon fiber. This is a composite material with the carbon fiber painted on it. And I tell you what, look at this pattern here. This is a very tight pattern and this paddle is phenomenal. The drives and the, the power shots with this are ridiculous. You can still generate tons of spin. If I played singles, this would be my paddle. It takes a little bit of getting used to. If you're used to a control paddle, you want to use this. It's going to take you a couple weeks to get used to the resets because it is a hot paddle. It is very hot. But when you get used to it and you get used to that speed up ability, you can move a lot less and do a lot more. So you can mask a lot of shots with a paddle like this. I am super impressed. Keith, that was so beautiful. Let's keep the reviews going. If you're a fan of the CRBN paddles, you're not gonna wanna miss this comparison between the new Power Series and the old version. First, let's talk about the, the fact that they have the 14 millimeter version and the 16 millimeter version. They're both the same when it comes to what I'm gonna talk about. So I don't need to have all of them up here for display. So let's talk about the differences between the old model and the new model. And then I'm going to get into the feel of these for the different shots and talk about the things that you care about when you're wanting to play pickleball. First off, let's talk about the differences. So this guy here is an upgrade in most ways, if not always. So first off, they're using the Torre carbon fiber which is the top carbon fiber out of Japan. There's only about five paddle manufacturers using this right now, and there's gonna be a lot more. It's more expensive material, but this is the Cadillac of carbon fiber. So it has the new carbon fiber face on it. The second thing they did was inject foam around the walls of this paddle because that will help with the support of the sweet spot, make the sweet spot a little bit bigger, and also help with the vibration, a little bit of the dampening for the vibration because this is a very stiff paddle. 
Because of the construction, what they do is they do a thermal, um, a thermal vacuum seal where basically it will seal inside all the way around here in the polymer core inside of this with the carbon material as well. So then they inject foam outside of that to help with the sweet spot and the vibration. The next thing they did was do a reinforced unibody construction. So what they do is they extend the face of the paddle down past the break points and then the other stuff up past the break points so there's no weak spot in the handle. So it's a unibody design. So it gives you more uh, strength here and these paddles are near impossible to break. You can see Chris Olson try to break one on his knee. He did not do it at all. So this is very, very much a more stiff paddle with a little bit less flex and it will not break. The last thing they did to make this different is the fortified handle. So not only is the handle formed differently, it's a little bit smaller with a little bit more pronounced bevels. So you can see the picture right here where the paddle handles the, the old versions a little bit more blocky, a little bit less beveled. The new version's a little bit smaller, a little bit more beveled. You can actually feel the bevels a little bit better in your hand, a little bit less blocking. But what they've also done is they've extended the carbon fiber all the way down the edge of the handle, which then strengthens it, fortifies it, and dampens it a little bit for a little bit less shock when you're hitting the ball. So that's the major differences of the construction of this paddle. They're all coming in around eight ounces, so the weight difference isn't any different. Let's talk about the differences with the shots that we hit. First, let's talk about the differences of the feel of these paddles. So this paddle here, the new Power Series, is a lot more crisp feeling. When I say crisp, meaning the paddle, the ball bounces off the paddle quicker. It's a stiffer paddle. So the ball does not stay on the paddle uh, as long as the old version. So therefore you're gonna have a little bit smaller sweet spot on this guy, a marginally smaller sweet spot, but the feel is completely different. The old version feels very muted. When I say muted, is it's kind of a thud. It's a very, uh, some people call it dead feeling. Some people call it very controlled feeling. Uh, where you hit the ball, where you're not necessarily going to know if you hit it up in the upper left corner, you're not going to know it's exactly in the upper left corner, you're going to just know it's on the left side of the paddle on the upper side. Whereas this one, if I hit in the upper left corner, I'm going to know I hit in the very upper left corner because the feedback on this paddle is so much more pronounced. So some people like the dead feeling, they like the muted feeling, and they like the sound of the original one. This one here is one of the largest sweet spots that I've ever hit. The Carbon 1 and the Carbon 2 of the old version, phenomenal control paddles. These guys have no power. These are not a power paddle. If you need the paddle to give you power, you do not want this paddle. You want this version. And the, and the sweet spot is not so small that it's, it's just marginal. Marginally smaller because of a stiffer paddle and the, the, the face and the construction of the paddle. When we're talking about spin, this guy has more spin. It is one of the top spinning paddles on the market. It has the Torre carbon fiber, which is the top carbon fiber. This guy has more spin than the old version. So that's the, the, one of the clear differentiators. Not only does this one have more power, this one has more spin. Let's talk about the third shot drops, the resets. Anything defensively, you're gonna do better with this version because this is a defensive-minded paddle. It's got a ginormous sweet spot. You can control it really, really well, and it feels like you can just put the ball wherever you want. This one here is gonna have a little bit of a learning curve on the resets, on the, the dinks, on the uh, third shot drops, because it's a little bit more powerful with a little bit more spin, you're going to have a little bit of a learning curve on this if you're used to playing this type of paddle. If you're used to playing a power paddle or a fast paddle, this paddle is gonna feel awesome to you because it's gonna feel like it has more control and enough power to get the job done. Obviously drives, we're gonna go to this power series. The drives and anything that involves power, that's why they have power in the name. This paddle has some pop to it, but not so much that you're sacrificing control. It is still a very controllable power paddle. And I would say it's probably on the lower end of the power paddles that are out there, like the, the, Van, the Power Airs or the, in, the Onyx, any of the harder hitting paddles. This is not going to be a power paddle. This is a control paddle with more power. 
if that makes sense to you. It's, it's a control paddle with more power that gives you a lot of spin. So right now, depending on when I'm playing or who I'm playing against, if I'm playing against somebody that is a banger, somebody that hits really hard and I'm gonna have to do a lot of resets and I'm gonna have to play a lot of defense, this is gonna be my paddle of choice because I like the muted feeling. I like the ability to know that when I hit it anywhere on the paddle face, it's going to go where I'm intending it to go with a little bit loss of power because of the big sweet spot. If I'm going to play a more offensive game or I'm working on my offense and I need to get a little bit more aggressive, I want to hit with more spin, this would be my paddle of choice. This paddle, these paddles are really for anyone that plays pickleball. There's no specific person that would play these paddles, but it's all about preference. It's all about the way and it's all about the style that you play in and the way you want to perform on the court. Hey guys, if you like all this content, please click like and subscribe. Now remember, they come in the 14 millimeter and the 16 millimeter. The 14 millimeter is just a little bit more pop on both sides of these. They both have 14 millimeters. The 14 millimeters have a little bit smaller sweet spots, a little bit more power than these guys, and it's a good tweener between the 13 and the 16. Some people don't like the lack of power, the lack of power on the 16s, even with the Power Series. It's still a 16 millimeter paddle, and the 14 millimeter paddles offer a little bit more power with the same references and more spin. So you can get a little bit more spin on the 14 millimeter than the 16 millimeter. Let's keep the reviews running and save 10% on any pickle paddle. We're gonna be covering the Epic from Selkirk to pick which model, if you really like this control model, this body shape, the Epic body shape, let's talk about the differences and which one to choose, shall we? Now, just talking about the Epic body shape, this is a shorter, wider body shape. So the S2 is a little bit wider of a body shape. It is a more of a control paddle. It's got a shorter handle. This is kind of the S2 with a larger, longer handle. It is a control model. So when I say control model, the Invicta is a little bit longer here. This is going to get you up close and personal to your ball, and it is a control-based paddle. People really, really love this paddle also because you can roll and you can hit all the shots, and it also is comfortable enough for a two-handed backhand in general. So let's talk about the different shots that we have to hit, and let's talk about which one I would pick for those different shots. So first off, let's talk about third shot drops resets, anything that has to do with control. Which way would I put these paddles as far as control? So this is actually the, um, this is the amped version here. So the amped version, we have the regular version, the Vanguard 2.0 version. Okay, so if I was gonna put these in order for control, the soft shots, the softest paddle out of here, I'm gonna go with these two as the first two. Then I'm gonna go with the amped version, and then we're gonna go with the Power Air. This is the way I would stack them as far as touch goes, with the control being all the way over here on the left side and the power being all the way over here on the right side, the least control, the smaller sweet spot. So big sweet spot would be over here on the left side and the smaller sweet spot would be all the way over to the right with the power air. And this is the way I would do, this would be for control shots. So this would be third shot drop. When you start talking, I want a little bit more control, but I also want spin out of these two paddles. This guy here spins way more than the regular Vanguard 2.0. Regular Vanguard does not spin. It's more of a control paddle, more of a pusher's paddle. You can get some top spin on it with good form, but this paddle here is one of the top five spinning paddles on the market and it has as much control as the Vanguard 2.0. Although the Vanguard 2.0 is much softer feeling, it is like butter when you touch this ball. It's like an extension of your hands. So between these two, spin and a little bit more pop, a little bit more control would be over here on the left side. So let's talk about drives. So if I was gonna pick this for the hard shots, the drives, the serves with spin, um, I would obviously start with my two power paddles. So the top power paddle out of these four would be this guy here. This has the most power and the most spin out of these guys. So we're gonna kinda combine these because these are a little bit relevant when we start talking about the differentiators here. Then the next one would be the amped version of this paddle. That's the second one as far as pop goes. Then the third one as far as pop goes is going to be the Project 003 
And then the last one here would be the Vanguard 2.0 as far as power goes. Now, when you start going power and spin, then these two slides over here is while the amped version has much more power than the Project 03, it is not good for spin. So if we were gonna do spin as a category, it would slide over here to the right with the Project 003 and the Power Air being the two spinny with the power. Now, for pure power and drives, if you don't really need help from the paddle or you don't need the paddle to generate spin for you, the amped version is plenty of pop with it and it has a lot bigger sweet spot. So out of these two power paddles, I would say that this one here has a larger sweet spot and this one here has a little bit more pop. So with perimeter weighting over here, the Power Air can be a very solid paddle, but it does have a smaller sweet spot. You're gonna to need to help it out a bit. So for me, gun to head, if I was gonna play, these would be the two paddles I would choose between. Uh, I lean right now towards the Project 03 because I've learned that I do like spin and I like imparting spin upon the ball, which I played with the Vanguard 2.0. Spin was not part of my game. So I can pick either one of these paddles up and they feel very similar. It's a lot more crisp off the Project 03. Has a crisper feel because of the way this shell works around the core. And this guy here just feels like butter. It's nice, soft control. It feels like you're catching and throwing the ball. It feels like cheating. So that's the difference between the control models, and that's the way I would pick if I was going to play a tournament right now. Look, I do this full time, so if you buy a paddle, please save 10% and keep me in business.